are of course the most happy and contented of all workers are the farmers. Well, sometimes. That's probably because ploughing has become much easier. The horse-drawn plough is being slowly overtaken by the tractor with mechanical horsepower. And a modern ploughman turns up the soil as gracefully as a debutante turns up her pretty nose. The essential parts of the plough are carried on the beam, to which are attached the handles. The skim coulter shaves off the top layer of grass and buries it in the furrow. It's just in front of the share. The knife coulter actually cuts itself a slice of soil. Its size and shape, especially in the case of wheelless ploughs, depends largely on the skill of the plumb. As the plough moves forward, the furrow slice is turned by the curve of the breast or mould board. The share raises the slice from the earth and the shape of the share determines whether the furrow is rectangular or otherwise. With wheeled ploughs, as contrasted with a swing type, the small wheel rests on the ground and the big wheel dips into the furrow. Through the ages, ploughs have greatly altered in shape, as these specimens in the Kensington Science Museum show. A Syrian wooden type and an Egyptian steel-pointed share, which might have been used in the 11th century. A primitive wooden form used in the rice fields of Siam. It was drawn by water bufflers. A wooden Welsh plough about 100 years old. In 1760, James Small introduced into Scotland a new kind of plough which could be drawn by two horses instead of a team of oxen. Wilkie's turn rest plough, for turning the furrow slice to either right or left, especially on sloping land. The steam balance type, for multiple ploughing. It's worked by two engines at opposite ends of the field, one pulling and the other paying out rope. The double furrow plough, which ploughs two furrows at the same time and enables one man to do twice the amount of work. Anything to make the farmer really happy. And so we